Here with their point of view, Director of Public Policy Program at Hunter College, Basil Smichael, and Harry Siegel, a senior editor at the newsroom, The City, co-host of FAQ.NYC podcast, and columnist at The Daily News, one of my loves. Welcome, guys. <laughs> so when Mayor Adams was on, he was just talking about the fact that he doesn't think he's going to have to lay off people or cut the size of the city workforce, despite the fact that the city is, in his words, facing a financial cliff. Is this realistic? Well, I, I think it, in the short term it's realistic, but you know he also, uh, in the midst of money from the federal government for COVID, there was a time when both he and the governor were talking about everyone being a wash in cash, and all of a sudden he's got a program to eliminate the gap, and so this sort of whiplash is something that I think we we all need to be concerned about uh, because it's a it's a matter of where where are we exactly? Democrats nationally are talking about the fact that we've got money. Um, um, and we're giving it to states and, and cities, and we're we're attaching that to Biden in the hopes that it could elevate the ticket broadly in November. Um, so to be talking about both programs to eliminate the gap and questions about whether we can and cannot lay off folks is a little bit concerning for for I think the larger the broader narrative. But you know certainly uh, for the city at a time when so many workers are already concerned about what their future is going to be. Harry. Well, look, what Adams is doing is very reasonable because that federal money is going away. The out-year deficits are really big. And we may have a much rougher recovery than the nation at large this time because interest rates are way up. Right. Whereas after 2001 and in 2008, because the feds kept interest rates down and that was good for Wall Street, New York had a quick recovery. Adams knows all this. His problem is he got to be mayor by saying, um, you know, uh, I, I can balance things, I can turn the city around, we're going we're gonna to cheer, we're going to have a recovery, we're ready for things. And now he is a mayor, and he's looking at this picture, and it's tougher. So the first step is to say, everyone needs to tighten their belt, police included, by 3%. This is the second time in his first year in office he's doing this, right? Telling agencies they need to spend less. And so, yeah, no way else is reasonable for now. Um, but... He's going to find out in the future. Um, our second black mayor, like our first one, may find out that he's coming to office right when things are getting considerably tougher. And that's going to be hard, and it's going to be very different than what he campaigned on. And I would, if I could add just very quickly, because sure. that's an important point, given that the city council is on him to restore cuts to education. Right yes. Now. And that, you know, so when we, when we, when we actually start getting into real policy, um, he's going to have a battle with a more progressive city council and perhaps the, uh, a progressive state legislature. But you can't spend money you don't have. That's and right. now we're also facing, on top of everything else, all the labor contracts are about are, are up, and he's going to have to negotiate with every city union, and they all want to get more money. So what's going to happen there? I mean, you can't get more money, and, I mean, and then lay people off. I mean, go for it. So here's what's wild is the state, speaking of farther to the left lawmakers, um, and then Kathy Hochul signed on the first day of school, we're going to have a class size cap okay. only in New York City. One year to implement it, that buys Adams a little time, but that's going to be 500 million a year just for K to 5, and they're doing it through 12, 10,000 more teachers, even as the public schools have just lost over the last five years something like 100,000 students. So with tougher times ahead, the, the, this is in effect an unfunded mandate, as uh, Adams and Chancellor uh, David Banks have said, uh, but they're going to have to figure out that money, the labor money, and everything else, and maybe do this during a downturn and with not out everyone coming back to the office and potentially a real decline in property taxes. Mm -hmm. It's tough. So I got the sense that you think that this promise of no layoffs and no shrinking of the workforce, even if it's by attrition, um, may not be realistic. Yeah, I don't know if it's realistic, and you know, Gordon Harry's point as well. You know, we're st we're still in an election year, so right now. So you nobody have, wants to say so layoffs. That's, while, that's, while that's exactly, to, that's exactly yeah, right it. now, and and at the same time, the governor and the mayor have a relationship that is better than any governor and mayor probably in the last twenty years yeah, for, for sure. this moment in time. So we'll see what happens after November. Will the mayor be this sort of pro labor uh, mayor that give you know even in these tough times starts giving a lot of uh, uh, giving a lot more to labor unions or are we going to see um, that conflict with where Kathy Hochul is who may or may not uh, want to be a supporter of that 
policy. So I have a question. This is you know not about what the mayor had to say, but when you look at the you raised the gubernatorial election, you have um, Lee Zeldin, the Republican mm -hmm. candidate, who has been um, attacking the governor on crime and on congestion pricing, and somehow I think those are two issues that um, voters relate to. So is is Kathy Hochul in trouble? Well, this the the, the polls have had her well ahead, but still within striking distance um, for, for Lee Zeldin. So she's got to push ahead. She's a good fundraiser, so that's very helpful. But those two issues are very salient issues in the suburban communities, in particular in rural communities, but certainly suburban communities. What is the sort of X factor here is that we're seeing nationally and certainly locally, you have so many women that are mobilized around reproductive rights. So if Kathy Hochul and the Democrats can find a way to bring some moderate and this is, and Republican women, particularly suburban white women, um, to say like above all, this is an issue we need to come out and mobilize around. Then I think that helps her. Without that, um, it's still it's 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 still within striking distance for Lee, but um, but it's going to be a lot tougher. Harry, it's far enough striking distance that Hochul is still doing the Rose Garden thing. Mm. She has <laughs> massive money in the. Is that a good strategy? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, th I think she's an accidental governor who has some things to uh, to prove and should be doing that. And what she's trying to do is say and engage as little as possible about crime, about the congestion pricing thing, or really anything else, and hope it's enough to uh, to get through. But how do you feel about that? Do you think that maybe she's miscalculating, Harry? I'm not sure. I, I think this will be closer than expected. Yeah. I think she has she has a real buffer. Um, the, 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 there's a real Democratic voting registration advantage in the state, and if it gets closer, she has things to point out about Zelda. He hasn't acknowledged the result of the 2020 election. But he's a very Trumpy Republican in certain ways that I, I, I think would be salient for suburban and swing voters within the city who he needs to get to get there. And that's why he's showing up with like Democrats in the Bronx and all that. And I like to We're going to have to leave it right here. I'm sorry, we're out of time. Thank you. We're going to be right back with your point.